Hey, 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 folks, here I am uh, doing another uh, Moho tutorial for you guys. So for this one, we're going to be taking a look at how to mirror a body turn or a head turn at wherever applicable as symmetrically as possible. Now, usually now usually when you're doing this, because uh, here we have uh, my character Luna from the uh, one animation I released recently. Um but when you are doing a body turn, typically to make things consistent, you need to have a a rotation sheet, a turnaround sheet, however you want to phrase it, um, and because those give you different perspectives on the character. Now, what happens if you don't have one, you can't make one, you are too lazy to make one like me, etc.? This is the video for you. So what we're going to be doing is. I have a body turn for Luna. I mean, her head turns separately, but you can see her body turns one way, and we're going to be trying to flip this as symmetrically as possible without flipping the entire layer, like if I were to do this. Because and the reason you wouldn't want to do this in some cases is Luna, for example, you can notice that her hair, her freckles, um, are not symmetrical. So... If you flip, as you can see, you know, there's a bit of an inconsistency there. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to uh, clear all the crap in the timeline. Um, well, actually, so let's do this. So first, I'm going to turn her body all the way to one side because I already did this one turn. Now, instead of doing Control R to render, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to Project Settings and set the fill style to none and for consistency i'll also set turn off go to display here in the bottom right and then hit uh, check off fills so now we just see the strokes of uh of luna so when rendered hold on, i'll just hit control arm when rendered you can see that she you know in the render view appears as basically just line art so what we're going to do with that is I'm going to hit save as PNG and then just, you know, save it in, I guess, the folder that all my files are in. But you can obviously save where you want. And I'm going to import that into Moho. Now, I will point out something very important is, I mean, this is just kind of a general character tip, is when you are designing a character, you generally want to try to have the character centered as, po like, as, centered as possible on the canvas if you want to make this work the best. Like, whatever your default camera settings are, the zoom, etc., have that be as consistent as possible. So, like, you can see all these bones, like, have, you know, Y is zero, um, at least because these guys are vertically aligned, um, and so on and so forth. Like, all the, all the vector layers and all that are as close to the center of the canvas as possible. So, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to import the image that we uh, exported, if I can find it. Here it is. So, so I'll just hide Luna for a second. So, hold on, why is that? Oh, hold on, I think it's the camera settings. I'll just shift it up like that. Um, so, this is the line art of Luna that was exported before. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the... Uh, with the layer select tool, I'm going to do flip layer horizontally. So now she is perfectly mirrored. And I'm going to reactivate Luna. I'm going to change the opacity of this to, let's say, 40 is what I usually do. Um, okay, so now I'm going to... Oh, and I'm also going to turn off... Or turn on ignored by layer selector. So that way, I, like, when I alt, you know, click, it's not going to... It's not going to select the image overlay because we're using that to trace and I don't want to just keep selecting that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to, I already made one the body turn smart bone that goes this way. So now we're going to do the opposite turn that goes this way. So, and the process more or less plays out the same way. So I'm going to start here by just dragging this into position this and it's kind of offset a little bit because the uh, for whatever reason the image didn't spawn it or spawn did not appear at the uh the you know original like the exact position but i mean it's close enough to approximate so 
So I'm just going to be moving all this stuff around. Oh, hold on. I have uh, that other bone selected, don't I? Okay, so let's just deselect that. This guy here. Grab that. Move these things here. And let's see, what else do we need to do? Um, I am going to turn fills on because some of uh, Luna's masked layers don't, like her shirt, don't show through. So let's see, so I'm going to go to torso. And yeah, it's pretty much just a process of just moving things around in the opposite direction, except you have the um, the template file, the uh, the line art to help you with that. So and and this and this would work for a head turn as well. I am just simply using it for this. And in this case, it would also be better to also have the colored version. So what we're going to do for that is I'm going to, like for certain mass layers. So I'm going to do fill style, set that to normal for a sec. One, one, same process of just import there. And, just, and what I'm doing to keep this consistent is I'm copying the y-axis coordinates and then just pasting them on this other thing. So this, this guy will be at the same height as the other one, and that'll make it easier to trace. And like the other one, I'm going to ignore layer selector. I do opacity 40, apply, or, or okay, either either or. And let's get back to it. So, go in here. Wait a minute, did that? Oh, well, I flipped it on frame one, that would be why. So, let's see. Torso. Going to. Oops. And what another another thing that that'll help you is that if you're trying to do if you're doing this method, you may also want to um, hide certain parts. Like in this case. Um, it would it would have been better to hide her arm because that is blocking some of this stuff. But I mean that it's something that I can approximate. So, um, but I mean you can if you want to. And I don't know why all these points have curvature all of a sudden. Now, one thing I will point out that I'm about to do here is that, for consistency's sake, um, so the so the left, like the uh, you know, turn right, at least to her perspective to Luna, is at frame 48 is when most of the stuff happens. Like the uh, the arm, you can see, comes above the torso at frame 48. So we're going to be doing that on all the stuff and the opposite side. So in this case, Luna's uh, right arm will, and, and for clarity, I do have, uh, if I can open this, um, uh, let's see, depth sort, animated layer order on, so I can do this. I'm gonna move her right arm up and over her torso. So it'll make that change because I'm on frame 48. Same thing, I'm going to have her right leg uh, move above her left leg, but not above her crotch because that's where a lot of the uh, the patches are to mask the lines. So that's that's all good. Let's see.
another thing I'm doing here is uh, for reference for reference on the body turn for her foot just because t typically I mean in most cases you would never see a character's foot turning in real time usually it's you know above yeah you know, above the camera or what have you but for simplicity's sake for my purposes <clears throat> at frame 72 Luna's left foot does a horizontal flip so she's going to we're going to do that for her right foot as well at frame 72 just again for consistency I'm going to go here I'm going to flip do a side flip and there we go that is taken care of Now let's take a look. So, so we got Luna here. Do that. Then if we turn over this way, that looks per yeah that that's looking pretty good. I mean, there might be some fine t fine uh, fine tuning needed to you know achieve uh, perfect consistency. Like for example, I noticed. Uh, there's a little bit of clothing, her under undershirt there, whereas there isn't any on the opposite side. But, I mean, again, that's the kind of thing that you can just sort of fine-tune on your own. But that is all ultimately achievable, again, by just having some, some reference layers. In this case, having one for just the line art, and then one for, uh, for color, so you can actually see masked layers and, and such. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful, and I will see you all next time.